back. One theme that we've been focusing on over the last couple of days is this low-cost housing theme. It's got a substantial boost from the government as up to 12 lakh of home loans have received an interest subvention. V. Raghu, the executive director of Repco Home Finance, joins us now to tell us what the uh, potential of this could be for a sector like his and uh, for particularly for Repco Home Finance, what this would mean. Uh, Mr. Raghu, thanks so much for joining us. I wanted to start by asking you how much this scheme could spur demand for homes, especially in the low-income category. And for a company like yours, what could the immediate benefits be? Well, I think as far as the affordable housing scheme announced by the government of India under the Prime Minister Avas Yojana, this is definitely going to give uh, or improve the affordability of houses to people in the lower income group. Now, I think people with or a family with a household income, annual household income of now 3 lakhs rupees onwards, up to 18 lakhs of rupees are covered under the credit link subsidy scheme. So definitely this will be a boost for all these people who are looking to buy a house according to their income levels. And this will definitely increase the demand for housing from this section of the population. Similarly, the government has also announced the concessions from the supply side also. So the challenge will be from the supply side. Once the supply is going to match the demand, I think the housing for all scheme will be a great boost to the economic growth also of the country. As far as the companies like Repco Home Finance are concerned, about 80% of my housing loan book are covered under this scheme up to annual income of 18 lakhs of rupees. So I think almost around 6,000 crores of rupees in the ex existing loan book is covered under the scheme. So this could be a tremendous boost for future growth for the company in this segment. Okay, uh, have you figured out the mechanics of the uh, rece receipt of money, uh, Mr. Raghu? We were given to understand that the moment you get a borrower and you clear it with NHB that this is eligible for subvention, the entire uh, uh, subvention amount comes in, several lakhs comes into the uh, consumer's account immediately? Yes, the moment we file the claim with the central nodal agency, for us it is a national housing bank with whom we have signed the MOU. Mm. The moment we send the details of all the loans which comes under this particular scheme, mm. and once the national housing bank verifies the eligibility of these loans, the interest subsidy amount is received upfront mm. for the entire loan what we have claimed for, and we receive it within for about 48 hours. Maximum time they have taken is about five days, mm. and the subsidies are released within 48 hours. And we have already claimed under the earlier EWS LAG subsidy scheme, we have claimed the amount, and we are very confident our systems are in place to claim the subsidy amount from the nodal agency. Okay, that's interesting. Actually, we had Mr. Kalyana Raman, the NHB uh, managing director, yesterday on the channel. Uh, but, uh, uh, I mean, so the uh, uh, lump sum amount goes into the account of the housing finance company, not the borrower. Right. See. Yeah. Uh, well, the moment we receive the subsidy, you know, the lump sum amount, the money is created into the individual, okay. you know, the accounts. So with the result, the individual account's principal amount comes down immediately. Okay. So for example, in the EWS scheme, for a 20-year loan, we get a maximum subsidy of around 2,67,000 now. Okay. So what the moment we receive the 2,67,000 rupees in an individual account, the principal amount comes down immediately by that amount. Oh. So the EMI also get reduced by about 2,500 okay. rupees per month. Okay. Okay, yeah. so that explains the mechanism. You said 6,000 crores of loans are covered under this scheme for your own company. What would this do to the loan growth in FY18 compared to what you saw in FY17? How much of a boost can one expect? Now, when I said 6,000 crores, I took the, you know, whatever was the outstanding loan book as at the end of uh, December 2016. I did the calculation, back of the calculation. But the scheme is going to be operating only from January 1, 2017 for the middle income group. Mm. So what I wanted to say is that a maximum number of loan accounts which are going to disburse from January 17 will fall under this category and we will be in a position to do that. 6,000 crores I was talking about on the overall loan book. Mm. We expect probably, you know, the, whatever the new loan book which you are going to generate, from January onwards, I think a maximum amount of that can be covered. For example, if I do it about, uh, let's say, a growth of about 2,000 crores approximately mm. in a year, 
probably a maximum amount of that, about 80% of that can be covered under the scheme. Okay. Uh, well, uh, therefore, what is your AUM now and what are you looking at uh, by the end of FY18? See, my AUM uh, at the end of uh, December was somewhere around 8,700 crores. Mm. And we probably expect to close, let's say, by this year, it's not a guidance, probably about, let's say, about 9,000 crores or something like that. So okay. we assume or we expect probably a growth of around 20% on this book over the next year. Okay. Uh, this, so that will be the loan growth or the asset under management over the FY18. Okay. A final question to you, Mr. Raghu. Uh, you know, some of the microfinance companies have had, um, uh, uh, you know, are facing the rough end of the stick from their borrowers because of this farm loan waiver contagion. Uh, how did you get through demonetization and how are... Uh, your, uh, uh, you know, default loans uh, faring now. What's the extent of default? See, we also had the initial hiccups after the demonetization yes. in the month of November, December, which continued in the month of January also. But I think February onwards, the collections improved and we expect probably the entire thing to come back to normal by the first quarter of FY18. So we had a very high NPA figure which was reported in the month of December. We expect mm. that to come down substantially during the fourth quarter. And maybe, you know, we'll reach our normal position by FY18 onwards on the NPA moment. Okay. Well, just one word on net interest margin. Uh, you all had uh, dipped a bit uh, in the last quarter when you reported to 4.2% from 4.5%. What may be a stable number for 2017? Uh, is it something to do with my gross NPA level as at the end of December? No, sir. Yes, no, 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 no. No, no. I, okay. You can give me your NPA number, but I was asking you for the net interest margin. Oh, no, my net interest margin was somewhere around 4.2 percent as at the end of the last quarter. We probably expect to maintain that level in the coming year also. Okay. Okay, we'll uh, let you go on that too. Thanks for joining us and clarifying what the impact of this affordable housing scheme would be on companies like.